Statistics show that 40% of the food that's produced in America is never eaten. And if half of the waste worldwide would be recovered, we could end world hunger. We're looking at this whole thing and saying we have a management problem here, not a production problem. The vast majority of food wasted in America comes from a lack of space. Though many companies wish to donate their expiring products, few organizations can handle the bulk packaging, leaving over 130 billion meals to rot in our landfills every year, a problem that Blessings of Hope aims to solve along with world hunger. Started by four brothers after they left the Amish community in 2005, the privately funded distribution center, Blessings of Hope, comes from the foundations of faith, family, and the generosity they experienced from others at a young age. When I was growing up, my dad was in a wheelchair and we were pretty poor. So somebody would bring us boxes of food and I wanted to do something like that. In 2006, I started helping at an outreach. I started asking them, why don't they have a big warehouse where they can get tractor trailers of product in and share it with all these different ministries? Tears started rolling down his cheek and he said, you know, last week I turned down on a tractor trailer load of yogurt. I really wanted four pallets, but I couldn't take the whole tractor trailer load. And guess where it went? The whole thing went to the landfill. He looks at me and says, Aaron, when are you starting that warehouse? We felt like God asked us to go into ministry and trust Him to take us through. We committed to packing seven boxes a week for a local pastor. And we were like, you know, that's a lot of food. We started in a three-car garage in the, with, the, with the vision for a big warehouse, but we were in a three-car garage for, from 2006 to 2010. A couple weeks into it, it was 10 boxes and it was 15. It just kept growing from there. We moved into a small warehouse, 1,500 square feet. Then that grew to 3,600 square feet. Just kept on growing. While their first years of ministry had slow but steady growth, the Lat brothers used that time to perfect their business plan, create a distribution center large enough to hold the bulk donations of food from major corporations, and then divide that into manageable portions for churches, charities, and food pantries. This plan worked so well that by the end of 2019, they had to expand into a 48,000 square foot warehouse and just in time. When COVID-19 was introduced, we were hit with an onslaught of opportunities to help more people in a short amount of time. The warehouse got really empty. I mean, it, it got down to a few skids and it kept coming in and we would keep putting it out as fast as it comes in. We had close to a thousand percent, like 10 times the ministry served. In food volume was over five times. Some of us were working 80, 90 hours a week. Thanks to the donations of major food providers and the long, hard hours of their volunteers, Blessings of Hope earned national recognition after they contributed over 1% of the Farmers to Family program, supplying over 60 million pounds of food to those in need. They have not stopped growing since. Right now we're doing about 53,000 meals a day. We have close to a thousand volunteers per week coming through Blessings of Hope. And we are also booked out for four months. With more resources than ever before, Blessings of Hope's recent endeavors include disaster relief, such as the hundreds of thousands of meals they have sent to Ukraine. Been fortunate to serve other ministries that are taking food into Ukraine and distributing our mission is to get the food to the people, and then they are actually getting it out through their network of pastors in Ukraine and physically serving the people in Ukraine. While their journey to end world hunger has only just begun, Blessings of Hope continues to keep food out of the landfills and into homeless shelters, food pantries, and churches. As their organization expands into multiple locations, they never forget. It all started from one step of faith in their garage. Somewhere we learn that if God calls us to do something, our response is, yes, Lord, and then ask Him how to do it instead of saying, Lord, that's too crazy, because there's really no limits on what He can do.